All right, you guys, questions, questions, questions. So I have uh, Brett. Wait a minute. Brett's speaking. I'm back. Okay, Brett, man, singing country in Washington is a trip in Nashville. It's almost like gravity. We should do we are the world type thing with with esteemed colleagues. Yeah. So Brett Manning, um, amateur voice coach from that. <laughs> No, my colleague, a uh, great voice coach, um, uh, um, friend, uh, is suggesting that we do sort of like a we are the world uh, thing um, uh, with voice coaches, which I, <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I think it would be a super cool idea. I, um, I'm, I'm totally down for it. I'm totally down for it. In fact, um, I'm involved in a project right now which will be bringing – uh, top voice coaches from around the world together as a team. Um, sound familiar, Brett? Uh, something sort of similar but more cool. And uh, in that in that environment, in that project, um, that would be a brilliant idea. We bring in all the coaches and we do uh, we do that. I also thought that it might be sort of cool to do a. Uh, a, uh, um, a voice coach, uh, Jesus Christ superstar thing. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, I think. Um, but no, really, the, uh, we are the world is probably the best idea, right? Um, and what we do is we get into a studio, possibly, or, or we'd all like sing our part, decide on your part, get a tune, decide on the part, sing the part, um, have yourself filmed inside the studio sort of with the cool with the headphones and getting up to the, to the reflection filter and seeing your part. Um, and then, then we all edit it together with cool cutaways. Yes. That's great. Uh, but Brett, we'll have to give you the, <laughs> we'll have to give you the easy parts, you know, <laughs> we have to give Brett the easy parts. Um, all right. So let's get to work here. Uh, Gina regarding training, Gina um, asks, what are the top three things um, she needs to really begin with? Well, that's, uh, that's a good practical question. Gina, um, the top three things you need to begin with. Let's assume that one of the things that you have is that you have the course and the book and that you actually have you know, the program and what you need to to, to train, because um, if we don't have that, then that would be the first thing you need to start with is actually get some training going. Uh, let's assume you have that. I know you have that. Number one, Gina, make sure that you understand the user interface. Uh, we live in a technology world, um, and really uh, today and the future of vocal training will always include, incorporate, uh, technology. There's really no avoiding it. There's no getting around it. Um, we don't live in the 16th century. Uh, we don't live in a little village in Italy. There's some, you know, uh, some, some sort of, uh, uh, most of us don't. Um, but, I mean, I digress. My point is, is you've got to get familiar with the technology. And it's not, don't let that intimidate you. That's not a big deal. That's not something that is uh, um, overwhelming. Um, with with the four pills of singing, with the course, you log in. Okay, if you have Gmail, you've done that before. A lot of people you just log in. It's just a web-based system. Okay, and then after you log in, um, up at my account, drop down, and you have uh, my course and my training. It's in red, as you've noticed. At my course is where we have all the coursework in a true sense. Uh, lectures about about myth busting for singing, uh, lectures about about um, uh, sort of overviews of the methodology that we've developed here. Uh, there are lectures about vowels, lectures about onsets, of course, lectures about vocal effects, distortion, vibrato, the aural, um, and then individual lessons, demonstration lessons for every single workout, all 37 workouts. But in a lesson, lecture sort of interface. You're gonna see a video at the top, you're gonna to see copy, pictures, graphics, tables, quiz, everything that you can possibly need, want, or desire inside a course. 
Now, over at my training, that's the other user interface, it's one page, okay? One page with, with embedded widgets that allow you to access your training-oriented content quickly, right? So over here, you sit, you watch me with a lavalier and a jacket, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm Professor Rob, okay? And I'm giving you a lecture about technique and how the singing works and the methodology. That's great, all right? Go over here to my course and uh, get smart and go to school. Then at my training, it's when you're when you're done doing that and you put one of these in your hand, okay, and you want to train and you want to practice because at the vocalist studio, you're going to practice. you got to train, all right? I think I've pounded that point in over and over endlessly for the years. And then you go out to my training page and then you can play the streaming audio files and, and watch the demonstration videos and everything that you need. So, Gina, number one, Learn the user interface. Learn how to use the website, okay? Um, and uh, uh, you, you demi people, um, it's not too different. Um, you have the all the lectures at Udemy, okay? It's sort of a stripped down light version of the main course at the website, but it's fine. Uh, you have all the lectures. Go to school, get smart at Udemy. Just what sort of what Udemy is designed for? And then when you need to train, you need to stream audio files and play piano scales and all of that, you bounce out to the training page, put in the password, and you have access to your training. Okay? So user interface, know how to get around, know how to navigate. Two, learn how to warm up, uh, which would be phase one on the training page. Uh, you need to, one, learn how to warm up, period, in any time. It, at any period in your career as a singer, as a student, um, I'm still warming up today. It's, it's you know, the, 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 the stretching session that you do before PE, PE class. You have to warm up. Warming up is real. It's not, a, it's not a myth. It's not sort of a, there's no question about this, okay? Um, it takes about 15 to 30 minutes, depending upon the individual age and other factors, to really get the voice set up for singing. Not speaking, but singing, okay? And, and, and let's, you know, let me remind you that singing is different than speaking. Excuse me, the lighting is just funky. Hang on. So Gina, Gina, you want to warm up? All right. Hopefully it's a little better. Gina, learn to do those warm-ups. Phase one, okay? And when you warm up, Gina, it's not only uh, semi-occluded phonations through the nasals, but make sure it's super important that you warm up with a whimper, that you warm up in cry mode, that you configure the, the larynx into cry mode pretty much all the time, including at the warm up. Now, if I'm doing the TBS warm up, the nasals, buzzing on the nasals, and I've put my larynx into vocal cry mode, all right? Essentially, what you have is a puppy whimper, okay? So I like to say, whimper like a puppy. Okay, whimper like a puppy. So if I'm on M, mm, okay? This is semi-occluded phonation, resonant tracking on an M, on the nasal M, without cry mode. It's, it's not all wrong, it's kind of helping, but it's not the most efficient, all right? We are balancing vocal fold compression and respiration because we're in that semi-occluded phonation position, we're buzzing on nasal, so that we're getting something out of it. It's probably... I'd say maybe 70, 75% effective and helpful. But what's missing is my larynx is sort of pushing into that and, and, and my larynx isn't configured into cry mode, all right? Which would be, and I'm, I've explained this a million times, I'm gonna do it one more time because it's so important. It's not in cry mode. In cry mode, I get, where's my, where's my vocal folds? I get elongation of the vocal folds, okay? which creates hyperadduction, which creates 
really strong, efficient closure of the vocal folds. I also get I also get medial medial compression, meaning even distribution of the of the of the compression of that energy. It's evenly distributed along the surface area of my vocal folds. It's not riding on the edges or something like this. It's even distribution. That's really super important. That's one of the key elements that you need to sound chesty above the passaggio in the head voice, okay? You know, how, how do I sound chesty? How do I sound big and boomy and, and, and not falsetto in my, in, my, in my head voice is a popular question that people ask every hour of the day in the world about singing, all right, if you're a student. And um, there's, you know, there's, an, there's, there's several elements to that answer, but one of them is you need a high close quotient and good medial compression on the vocal folds, okay? You need a lot of fat surface area connected as you go through the, through the passaggio, okay? Three, with cry mode, it removes pharyngeal constriction. It removes pushing, squeezing, choking. A lot of the pharyngeal uh, constriction goes away. So back to my example. Uh, number two, the thing you need to know, warm up, but be good at it. Don't just push on a buzzy nasal. All right, that's not gonna really work for you. In fact, probably just make you tired. What you want to do is you want to cry, cry into a buzzy nasal. And if you do that in an M, essentially you're whimpering like a puppy. <laughs> See, product A, clunky. Um, uh, vocal folds are not elongated. They're not hyper compressed. I'm not getting medial compression. I'm not removing pharyngeal constriction. <laughs> and I'm pushing. I'm pushing on something clunky, all right? It doesn't have agility to it and flexibility to it, all right? Now I'm going to warm up the taffy, and I'm going to put a little cry mode into it. <laughs> you see that? I mean, I'm not even really warmed up. And because I've thinned out my vocal folds, given me some... Give me some medial compression and I've removed differential constriction. I'm able to go right, just whip, boop, whip, boop, whip, boop, right through my passaggio. Okay, and I'm really not really warmed up, okay? But it's that powerful. Okay, so Gina, number one, learn how to use the product. Number two, learn how to warm up because it not only helps you seeing better, but for beginners, this is important, you guys that are listening, for beginners. The warm-up is not only, okay, I'm about ready to start singing, I need to warm up for singing. It'll always be that. But for beginners, the warm-up is vocal health. It wakes up a tired, sort of clunky, stiff, not agile speaking mechanism, and it begins to do, it's sort of like doing stretches before PE class, okay? And if you haven't been singing, if you haven't been warming up, if you haven't been doing semi-occluded phonations, if you haven't been thinning out your vocal folds on a regular basis, if you haven't been doing medial compression and removing frontal constriction and doing the cry mode and these things on a regular basis every single day, then your vocal folds are going to be thick and clunky, thick and bulky. Right? So we want to, oh, want to cry in this stuff. Right? Three, Gina. Okay. Three, let's think about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of good answers for three. Uh, dive into phase two on the training page and begin to learn the five most important onsets that you're gonna need for training and that show up in every song. Those five warm-ups, oh, excuse me, uh, those five onsets are track and release, dampen and release, quack and release, wind and release, pulse and release. And actually, let's add another one. Six, attack and release. Okay, I'll say it again. Track and release, of course. Pulse and release, which is sort of our cry on set. Uh, Dap and release, starting notes with plosives. Uh, wind and release, starting notes with wind and respiration. Attack and release, glottal attacks, starting notes um, on uh, vowels. And quack and release. An onset designed to give you hyper compression so that people that have a hard time getting that, that, that vocal fold closure that we were talking so much about, it's a specially designed onset to help you get closure. All right, Gina? Hey, I'll take it one step further. The fourth thing that you want to do 
is then take those onsets, take those onsets and combine them with training valves and start doing silence. Okay? Learn how to use the product, get warmed up, get healthy, start studying the onsets one note at a time, going up the keyboard and down, then take the onsets and like Legos, plug them into valves. I recommend that you start with A or A as your first training valve. Plug them in the valves and then start doing melodic fifth and melodic octave sevens. Okay. okay. Lots of comments here. Goodness. All right. Let's see if I can pick it up over here. That's Lauren. Lauren, ask a question. All right. So, Lauren, hey, coach. On the flight to San, San Diego. Oh, cool. Okay. Brett. <laughs> What would you do? So what, what I suggested to Brett is that we do um, this song um, from uh, Team America. It's this funny puppet movie from years ago. And there's this goofy song called um, Freedom Isn't Free. <laughs> and then we do like a little shootout, you know. <laughs> All right. Got to get back to work, but thought I'd say hi to my brother. Oh, that's cool. All right. He's a good guy. Lauren, connection isn't the greatest at 30,000 feet. Yeah, so Lauren's on an airplane right now. Lauren, is just sort of like a, it's a miracle. It's, it's literally a miracle that you can watch me in my studio in Seattle in hopefully real time while you're at 30,000 feet traveling at 600 miles an hour. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Technology is just unbelievable. All right, going down. I'm back. Miss your thoughts. Oh, Draven, Draven, I'll be on... I'll be on while getting set up and warmed up for the last of our new course. So uh, it's no surprise, Javen Gray is my bro, Seth, and uh, we do a lot of work together, great guy, and we're doing some coursework together, developing courses, uh, more online courses. And uh, So he's, we talk on a daily basis, he's working on camera and audio issues and all that sort of stuff that goes with making movies, lots of camera audio issues of making movies. Uh, which, by the way, um, newsflash, I also just released a brand new course on warming up. So that whole warm up discussion I just had with Gina, you can go out to Udemy, I think it's like 10 bucks or some ridiculous price. And it's a really lovely, simple warm up course out there and it's not just it's it's not just all right you know get on this get on the scale and start warming up now just do a go like it's not it's not a do it like this it's not do it like this all right there is there is video demonstrations but what i've done is i've explored deep into sort of the the topic of warm-ups uh there's lectures on there that explain what i believe to be sort of the four most um popular warm-ups that people use in vocal training studios. Warm-ups I don't even really even typically do here with my students, but but nonetheless, viable, valid warm-up ideas. I want to just teach you about the world, the universe of warm-ups. There's also a lecture in, in there that discusses the vocal issues that warm-ups can help you improve or fix. There's a lecture in this um, new course that discusses how warm-ups help. I mean, what's really happening that makes it makes it work um, and some fun surprises as well. And, and of course, all the training files and the, and the scales and the, all the content that you would expect so you can go do it yourself. Um, anyways, James making a, a course of his own um, and it, it's going to be killer. I have insights to it. This course that Draven's putting together is going to be really super exciting and fun. Um, I have I have some content in it as well. It's sort of a collaborative. Next question, Brett. Man, singing country. We did that. Scrolling down. Regarding. Okay, we did that. Miranda, Gina, David, Ty, Rita. David, how you been? It's been a long, long time. Like eight years or something. You're down there in LA, I believe, doing theater stuff. Um, at a at a comment. 
give us up to date on how your efforts are going in LA. I think you were modeling for a while and then doing some theater work in LA. Uh, I'd love to have an update. Okay, what else we got here? Okay, Karina. Hi, Karina. Hi, Sarah. Whoa, there's a bunch of people in here. Hang on. So on this computer, I'm not getting the same feed, so I'm going to read up here. All right, Javen. Yeah, okay, Karina. Scrolling down. Sorry, guys. Uh, Karina, I am not good at... Okay, so wait a minute. Gerald, is this like the saying, too many cooks in the kitchen? Um, no. Uh, there's only one cook in this kitchen. <laughs> At the moment. All right, scrolling down. Karina. Yes, I know. Gerald. Okay, Karina. I am not good at breath support. How can I sing without collapsing at the finishing line? Okay. So Karina's question is, um, essentially translates to I'm running out of breath. It's calm. I'm running out of breath. Um, the singing voice is a wind instrument. It takes wind to play it. All right? It's a valid and important concern. Um, so what I tell my students when I hear uh, I'm running out of breath, the first thing I say is uh, need more air, take in more air. Okay, it's not a magic pill, it's not a magic bullet, it's a real pragmatic answer, but it's the first place to start. Um, to work on your respiration, First place you want to go as a student or you voice coaches out there, the first thing you want to make sure is happening for your student before you go down a rabbit hole of more complex breathing techniques and workouts and things you could do. First thing you want to do is just make sure that your student just knows how to take a proper, low, deep singer's breath. Okay? That's Nine out of ten times, all you really need to do. So let's talk about that. Karina, watch. Uh, by the way, in the course, there's a there's a video on this, Karina. Um, go to the course, and you'll see um, breathing exercises. It's like a 30-minute lecture on how to do breathing. Um, not only how to take in a big breath, that's all there, but also... Um, uh, 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 there's unique workouts that you won't find anywhere else that build the diaphragm, build the oblique, pushing down and out on the obliques and, and other uh, extrinsic musculature and motor skills that you need to take in good air and, 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 and um, release good air per se. But let's talk about an inhalation because that's probably the first thing you want to work on. So when we sing, any good voice coach, let me fix this thing. When we sing, any good voice coach will tell you to inhale. I like to say deep and low. All right? So when you take in wind and air for singing, don't do this. Okay, don't lift your chest, don't lift your shoulders. Don't, don't take in air as if you're at the doctor's office and the doctor asks you to, to take a big breath and, we, and you go like that. It's not going to work. You don't get enough capacity and you don't get enough energy. It's just inefficient. And the other thing about upper chest and shoulder movements when you take in air that is not a good idea is it's, it's too close to the neck. It's too close to this to the constrictors and the extrinsic musculature out here that that if triggered can suddenly turn into a tar baby, can suddenly turn into constriction and give you, you know, turns into tension, we call it tension creep, 
the tension creeps in and begins to give you singing, pushing problems. That pharyngeal constriction that we were talking about sort of goes away, all right? Or it's, it's compromised. Okay, so breathe deep and low like this. Something like this. Yes. Hopefully I don't look too chubby. Just. And yeah, sure, you see my stomach coming out a bit. You see some lower extrinsic movement down here. That's all well and good. But more importantly, it's what I'm not doing that I think is a more important lesson. Notice how I'm taking in lots of air without raising my chest and my shoulders. It's so very static up here, okay? All right. So that's a good, quick little lesson on on something to keep in mind when taking in air. All right. Now, um, oftentimes uh, when we have discussions about breathing, students will say. Uh, well, how do I get air in my stomach or do I make my stomach come out and stomach this and stomach that? Well, you know, it wasn't really my stomach that came out right there. It was really just more of a core torso, right? Don't be thinking in terms of expanding your stomach. The stomach is part of the digestive system. It's not part of the respiratory system. Okay, the stomach doesn't have anything to do with breathing. So in regards to getting your talk track right, in regards to auditory imagery, in regards to the language being correct so that the execution is more efficient and more timely in your training, don't think about the stomach or talk about the stomach. What you wanna be thinking about is expanding the core, oblique muscles, um, some diaphragm movements, those sorts of things. Now, all of that musculature for breathing when we sing and the workouts and what I just showed you is inside the breathing lesson in the course. So um, go there. Um, I'm actually sort of repeating myself right now. And what you have inside the course is got better audio and better lighting and more rehearsal and it's a better presentation. Okay, so just go to your course and find the breathing exercises, but breathe low, no upper body movement when you inhale, all right? That's for Karina. And that will help you get to the finish line. All right, Miranda, Miranda, Karina, top coaches, summit. That would be awesome, oh yeah. So, um, one day in the not too distant future, um, we're gonna we're gonna have a top teacher summit. That's exactly pretty much what we're gonna do, like a conference in some exotic land where people talk funny, and um, it's gonna be great. And the coaches that go to this this event and present will be the ones that are producing the most results with their students. The ones that are educating the most. More to come. Another Lauren from 30,000 feet. Lauren, man, I wish I could get better reception up here. Would have been great in flight entertainment. I'll watch the replay. No doubt, you sweetheart. Would you please, Lauren, would you please come to Seattle? <sighs> uh oh, there's Karen. <laughs> Karen, Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> I love you, Karen. All right, Christopher Scott Oberg. Welcome, Christopher. Please ask questions. Chris Wilson joined. Please ask questions. Draven, warming up for a lot of distortion can take even longer. That's probably true. Karina, if we miss part of this live chat, can I replay this segment? Um, yes, all of these Q&A um, sessions are replayed. 
Um, you can go out to my YouTube channel and find them there, and I'll just leave it here um, at Facebook so you can you can watch it. Absolutely, we're creating useful content for students that are using the course. So we're going to leave it up. Ricardo De Stefano, welcome. Marcio Marx from Brazil. Marcio, I may be reaching out to you soon. And the lovely Marie from Montreal. Voice coach from Montreal. Marie Lawrence Dubé. I think it's Dubé. Very sort of very French. Lovely. We have a lesson on Friday. Hi, Marie. Karina, all right, we've got to get to a question here. Um, I need full compression, yes. What is the best exercise? Okay, Karina, good question. Karina asks, I need full compression. What's the best exercise? I have a good answer for you on that. First of all, let's do the backstory and explain what we mean by compression. So those, those of you that might be watching this that aren't familiar with the talk track and the terms, let's get a little educated on what we're doing here. So when we talk about compression, all that means is the measurement of force between the left vocal fold and the right vocal fold coming together, all right? It's not vocal fold deduction, it's not vocal fold closure, it's the measurement of energy that we get from vocal fold deduction, vocal fold closure, all okay? right? Um, we throw this term around compression a lot in videos and in the course, um, but for, for general general practical purposes, it means vocal fold closure. So Karina is saying, hey, how do I get more compression? What, what should I do to get more compression? What should I do to get more vocal fold closure? <laughs> That's for a start. <laughs> how, do I, how do I get more vocal fold closure? All right. Super important for everybody. Absolutely. Um, it's even part of the the cry mode talk a, a scripty story, right? You hear me talking about it all the time. But you know what? To some extent, to some extent, you could make the argument that women need compression, maybe, maybe a little bit more than men. Maybe it's a, it's a bit of a stretch, but it's because on low notes, oftentimes the vocal folds for ladies blows open. Um, I don't really know why, um, but that's just the case. So anyways, getting to answer your question. Karina, everybody, the best thing you can do in the, in the four pillars of singing in the training course to build compression, I'm going to give you more, more than one solution, but the first thing you want to do is, drum roll please, drum roll. Yes, the quack and release onset. The quack and release onset. This is the quack and release onset. All right. It's weird. It's ugly. It's not singing. It's strength building. It's resistance building. It's the quack and release onset. It's the onset where we use quack vocal mode, which is hyper compression of the vocal folds. Students that can't get good compression, that don't have the motor skills to bring their vocal folds together to get the compression that you need to sing, all right? Stand by a piano. Stand by a piano and poke one note at a time. Ebony and ivory, all right? One note at a time, all the way up, through the vocal break and all the way back down, and do this. <laughs> You notice that after the quacky nee, 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 all right, I release that into a vowel. I release my product. I release my voice. Okay? So the quack release onset builds the motor skills that get that compression going, albeit it's a little over the top because it's quacky. You wouldn't use that quacky, nee, that ugly color in singing. That's not the point. You're using that 
just to get your muscles moving. And sometimes people need that, all right? When you go to sing, you would then throttle back just a little bit and find a nice balance so that your sound color doesn't sound like a choking duck and it has some, it's sonorous and it's beautiful, okay? But Karina, really good question. And I got a really good answer for you. Dive into the quack and release onset. You have a lecture on that onset, like a 30 minute lecture um, in your course. And you have a, a demonstration video, a separate demonstration video where I stand by the keyboard with a mic in hand and do individual quack and release onsets one at a time all the way up through my passaggio. I think I take it to a C5, a high C, and then all the way back down. You can train with me on the video. That's perfectly fine. If you feel like you know what you're doing and what to do, then go solo, okay? And every onset workout has a recorded file that you can also train with in the car, okay? So you just want to, you can just kind of poke notes in the, you know, randomly in the air. That's okay. You can singer size it. It's all right. Um, or you can stand by a piano or a keyboard. That's even better. Or inside the program, inside the course, is an individual MP3 audio file that I created myself. I remember the night I was doing it. I stood here, all right? It was like midnight. I stood here at midnight and poked one note at a time and held it for 10 seconds. Then poked the next note and held it for 10 seconds and recorded this, okay? I did that with like 24 notes up and 24 notes down for 10 seconds. Do the math on that. It was, um, I was, I was working hard for you guys. I put that thing together. Okay. So anyways, you have a recorded file that you can use in the car. All right. The quack and release onset. Now Karina, the track and release onset is also good for compression. That's just lighter bits of compression focusing on the nasal. This is the track and release onset. You notice when I release my valve, it has a color that is arguably acceptable. Like it's sort of, sort of lovely. It's could, you could imagine that that's a color in a song. You know, it's got a nice color to it. It's not ugly and quacky. Um, that's because it's the track and release onset. It's throttled back. It's not quite as squeezy. This is the quack and release onset. <laughs> All right, I'm getting that hyper compression that I would expect from the quack and release onset. I've often said that the track and release onset and the quack and release onset are sort of brothers. They're related to each other. Because the track and release onset releases a beautiful sound color, I, I call it the beautiful swan. Right, it gets to go to the show. The quack and release on set, because coming off that hyper compression, you get sort of an ugly, quacky sound color. It's the ugly duckling. It never gets to go to the show unless you work at Disney. Okay, what do we got? I'm Karina I'm giving you a likey for that. If you have a good question, you get a likey. Jan Vesic joined. Jan Vesic. Jan Vesic. Jan Vesic. Jan. Jan. If you're a man, you're probably Scandinavian. In which case it would be yawn. Who can say? Ask a question. Love to learn more about it. Draven, it's good to note that the cry feels like a top-down phonation. A lift in the area at the back of the soft palate. So I'm absolutely, absolutely. Um, all whimpers, all cries. You can feel this. This is not an imaginary thing. You can sort of feel this. You can feel this sort of coming down from the top down. It, uh, 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 uh. I mean that experience of the the resonance, sort of coming in from the top down on um, giving it a name and I think it's a good name we call it the whimper 
And not only does cry mode require a good whimper, but you want to whimper into every single note, every note when you're training and singing, pretty much. Nine out of 10 times, every darn note. Oh, yay. Uh, they always come in from the top down to get the best on set. Okay. Whimper into all of your onsets. I mean, man, I mean, it's just so important. Good point, Dave. Thanks. You got to like it. Next, Byron. Byron. Hello there. Hey, Byron. Just enrolled in the, the light version, the uh, TBS course light version. Not a huge enemy. That's great. Proud to have you, Byron. It's really great. Um, let's see what you got of the course. Do, here's his question Does one need to learn? a proper breathing technique before even starting with the first onset. No. You need to learn proper breathing technique, and I just talked about it. Hopefully you, you capture that. Byron, go to, the, uh, go to the course and check out breathing techniques, the breathing workouts, okay? It's all there. Start working on it. But don't wait. Don't wait because being too conservative and sort of waiting to get started on the training page and all that, that, that usually very quickly turns into procrastination. All right. So here in this studio, you learn as you go. Immediately the first day, I want you guys to start, start knocking out those lectures. All right. Start watching those lectures. Go to school. Get smart. But on the same day. Get a mic in your hand and start training. There's a lot of motor skills and muscle memory and coordination and strength building that has to happen to train well and to sing well um, for most of you because most of you are beginners. All right? Don't, don't. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the 616-page book first. I mean, I hear this sometimes. I'm going to read the book. I'm going to read all, everything in the book first. All right, and then I'm gonna go through all 180 videos until I feel like I'm until I feel like I'm ready to start training. No, don't do that. Number one, you don't start training, and that's what you need to be doing. You're not really getting you're getting smarter, but you need to do the athleticism involved. And two, if you do that, you wash out. You just wash out. You don't get. You're not feeling results. You're not experiencing singing results. You're not going to your band practice and, and, and experiencing the success, the immediate success that you can get by just simply getting started. Look, if you just do phase one, just do the warm ups. You just do the warm ups every single day for four weeks. I'm not recommending that that's all you do, but if that's all you did or all you had time to do, I guarantee you. I guarantee you that your singing will be transformational if you do it right. If you've got your buzzing right and you have a cry mode and you're doing it the right way, your singing will be transformational. It will blow you away. Don't wait for that experience. Don't put that on hold. Get after it, man. Get after it. So. What you got to do is you got to read and watch the lectures and, and, and be a good student at the same time that you're training. So make time for study and then make time for training. That's, that's the way it works. If you have an hour a day, you do like, uh, you know, let's say 15 or 20 minutes of reading and knock out a few lecture videos and then spend 45 minutes or an hour to training. All right. This is an athletic endeavor. This is like learning to dance, learning to ice skate, learning gymnastics, learning to dribble and shoot baskets. It's motor skills. You have to repeat it. You have to get on it and start working. Okay. And how I'd be moving backwards with this, I don't know, but you can just sort of only imagine. All right, Byron, great to have you, buddy. I hope that answers your question. Immediately get into the onsets and the warm-ups and everything. Don't wait. But be a good student, start reading. 
Karina, can you do a video for females just on warm-up exercises that we can follow every day? I have core cord closure. Karina, I could, and I think that's coming. Um, one of the things that the program would be would be cool is to have um, a TVS certified instructor that's female to uh, do some of the demonstrations. It's, it's been talked about before in the past. It's um, a really cool idea. We'll do that. Don't have that now, but it's not mission critical. You can get on my videos, the video demonstrations of me doing it, and just slide the little thingy forward and fast forward five notes. Just... It, just the only thing that's different between men and women is the frequency you start on. That's the, really the only thing that's typically different. I mean, once you get to B3, once you get to a certain note in on the, the content that's made for men, it's perfectly fine for you. I mean, in fact, I've, I've debated whether I should genderize the content or not. Currently they, they say men or women, um, but to be completely honest with you, it really should just be starts lower, starts higher. Um, there are actually some women that do better starting on the low G um, and some men who can't sing the low G. So they start on the female file. So it's not really necessary. Just move forward. Woo. You just mentioned some. Ha ha ha. Okay. Karina, you get a lot of likeies. Wait a minute, let's go back up here to Karen. Oh, okay, she's just joined. So back down here. Hi, Miranda. Miranda, I have your email. I'll respond. It's just been crazy lately. I'm trying to get to it. We can work something out. And Miranda, you get a heart. <laughs> Like I said, ever since those Star Wars cupcakes, man, <laughs> you're going to get a heart. If you bring me cupcakes, you get a heart. All right, Karina, thanks, Robert. You're welcome, Karina. Karina, the best way you can thank me is to tell your friends and uh, leave us a five-star review. Leave a five-star review with comments, and that's really the best way you can thank me. That's what keeps the lights on. Seriously, uh, um, but you're quite welcome. All right, Wassam, Wassam Ferris, thank you for letting us know about your new course. You are so generous when it comes to giving us information. You're welcome. Why don't you guys just sing better? He says, I'm so generous when it comes to giving you information. Actually, I think that's probably true. I am. <laughs> I, I, I want you guys to succeed. This is the real deal here. I, and, and so I want to help you. Um, but it's a two-way street. I mean, someone's, i got to pay for this room and other things. So I would appreciate it that if you're happy with the course and the training, if you're getting something out of our broadcast today, I really appreciate a nice review. Five star all the way with comments. Um, that keeps me going. That keeps me and my partners like Draven and Mike Elson and everybody else. It's, it's, it's sort of the, that's the mojo that keeps me and everybody involved that's helping us to, to bring you this going. All right. So appreciate ahead of time for anybody that can do that for us. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, by the way, on that new warm-up course, anybody that goes to the new warm-up course at Udemy enjoys it and does give us a nice review will get the um, the full ebook of the four pillars of singing. Full book. Retail value, 99 bucks. And that's how important these reviews are. Karina, can you explain how to do cry? I am not sure how. Wow. Um, yes, but I like I've explained that so many times. Karina, go to the course and go to 
acoustic modes, all right? And there are three lectures in the acoustic modes on the, um, on the main course, okay? The main course at Udemy or the full course on my website. There's three videos there that talk about the importance of cry mode, and then there's a video there that teaches you how to get into cry mode. It teaches you the techniques, the ideas on how to get into cry mode. All right. And I'm tempted to do it right here for you, but I've only got five minutes left. I want to answer some more questions. And my God, I mean, if you go out to my YouTube channel and you go into, as I say, the course or even my YouTube channel, there's not a production or a video that's being produced almost on a daily basis where I'm not talking about cry mode. And I've probably demonstrated the technique on how to get into cry mode about 10 times, all right? So go find the content in your course, okay? You'll find it actually in all three courses, in the new warm-up course, in the full light version of the course at Udemy, and at the full course um, where you get the book and other benefits and things out of my website. Miranda. We can just keep doing this right now. I have to give you another heart. Okay, Nazia, Chandre, hi, Nazia. Draven, so you know, there's a solid lesson on cry vocal mode in the course. <laughs> so Draven's like, you do know that there is a, like, like, it's like fully covered in the course, don't you? <laughs> I think it's, you know, I would be a good, I'm being, I would be, Karina, not don't not to not to beat on the issue, but were I a good teacher for you, I would say go to the course and watch watch, watch the lectures in the course that I already created for you with the beautiful lighting and audio and everything's just has cutaways and it's got little words that come across the screen and the three dimensional. It's really beautiful. Go to that. Put a lot of time and effort into that. You paid for it. It's in your course. So that were I a good teacher, I would make you go find the, for the answer. Remember when we were in grade school and the teacher said, you know, gave you an assignment and we've all did this before, right? And you, you, you go up to the teacher and you go, you know, how do I, uh, how do I learn more about elephants? Where do I, you know, where, where do I, where do I get information about elephants? You know, you're like in first grade or whatever. And, and the teacher says, go find it in your book. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> so that never changes. Okay. Yes, I need to watch that breathing video. See? To be completely honest with you guys, in particular with the full course out of my website, I mean, it's been like five years building that thing. I put everything I know about singing and training into that course. And then just about all the good stuff that other people know <laughs> into that course. I mean, it is so comprehensive. It's so comprehensive that I'm being completely honest with you. I'm not just trying to sell you the main course, but completely honest with you on Fridays, when I stand in here and teach my students and they ask me questions, every single question they ask me, I can refer to a video or a lesson in the course. It's in there. And that's what happens when you get obsessed. Hi, Lori. Hi, Bill. Good to have you. Miranda, you're the best. Thanks, Miranda. Byron, okay, heard you. Does training while sitting instead of standing make any difference? Oh, okay. Uh, Byron, that's a good question. Byron's question is, should I train on my feet or should I train 
sitting down. Okay? Is it okay to sit, change sitting down? I like that question and I love answering this. On your feet, soldier. On your feet. On your feet. There might be some exceptions unless maybe you're driving or you're handicapped or, you know, something is going on. But if you can get on your feet and start training, get on your feet. It helps you breathe better. It helps you support better. It helps you get more, ser more serious, more excited, and more motivated about your training. You're not going to fall asleep sitting on your butt, all right, if I can prevent it. Get on your feet. Okay? Train. Boom. When you watch the demonstration videos of me in the course, do you see me sitting on my butt? No. Nope. So this is Tough Love Coach telling you guys to get on your feet and train. Karina, I left the five star already. Aw, oh, thank you. No, you're going to love for that. Give me the word. What happened to Little Hardy? I can't. Okay. How often do you do this live broadcast? Um, I'm doing this every Thursday morning on Facebook. Okay. Every Thursday morning. Thank you for asking. And of course, Cedric. <laughs> Cedric from France, where they wear funny pants. <laughs> Hey, Cedric, thanks for coming, buddy. Um, great to have you here. Um, uh, reach out. Send me an email. Let me know how your training's going. Um, and I think that's it, guys. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for coming this morning. I have to go to work and build more content and more programs and more services to help you guys learn to sing better. Thank you for coming. We're here every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook. If you missed this, you can watch the video on the Facebook group. Um, also, go out to my YouTube channel and subscribe. You'll find another 320 videos out there, uh, lots of free content out there. Um, one thing that's sort of fun about YouTube is I was like one of the first guys to do singing videos on YouTube ever. Okay, when YouTube was like a little tiny startup company. So, I mean, you tell me, but I think it's sort of fun. If you go out to YouTube and you go back in time, you can see some early stuff that I did with like long hair and Carhartt pants and um, a little bit more loud and rambunctious back then. But uh, um, I think, yeah, still some good lessons and some good ideas in there. Um, and maybe a little bit entertaining, I hope, I hope. Uh, but these, these broadcasts are also in there as well. Train, go to school, get smart, come to me with questions, with the little question thing out of my website in the bottom right-hand corner. I love you guys, and I'll see you either on email, or on our broadcast next Thursday. Good day.